Good Monday morning. It's that time. Here's the word for this week. Seek critique, avoid opinions. Y'all ready? So in your pursuit of greatness, you will inevitably reach the threshold of inexperience. In fact, the more you get to that threshold, the greater you shall become. The human brain has been proven to be boundless. However, the human mind is limited to what exposure it has, things it can imagine, and what it's fed. So it should be obvious that for one to make impactful growth, he or she cannot rely solely on their own understanding. You can set goals, you can put measurable processes in place and commit to certain disciplines of learning. But until you're mature enough to endure critique, your growth will be stifled. You have to be careful though. You see where the critique comes from may not be an honest evaluation. It may be convoluted with others' ambitions. People who have the who who, who don't have the intestinal fortitude to try to do what you're doing. But they welcome the opportunity to tell you how to do it. You see, that way, assuming it works, they can have the action of saying they told you how to do it and thereby somehow in their mind sharing in your success. You know, it may come from uh, limited exposure. Those people that love you enough and, and they want to help, they love you enough to help, but they're unaware that they are genuinely unqualified. And that's not to suggest that what they have to offer has no value. It's just a very little value in the grand scheme of your objective. And then, of course, there's the worst of them, the, the people, the non-solution feedback. You know, that, that's politically correct. That's PC for hater. They can tell you everything that you're doing wrong, yet not offer one solution how to make it. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the trinity of opinions, and they should be avoided. Well, George... How am I supposed to seek critique if I'm avoiding opinions? That's what some of you are thinking right now. And some of you are saying to yourself, why the hell do I care what anybody else thinks? And that's nothing but pride talking. See, the mighty OJs told us, you got to give the people, give the people what they want. I can't, I can't even say that without singing it. <laughs> Dear prideful one, how can you know what they want if you're not talking to them. Bible says, seek wise counsel. The word is wise. You know, rightfully dividing critique and opinion, that's far more challenging than like separating reasons and excuses because with reasons and excuses, what is determined to be is based on whether you're the giver or the receiver of what's said. With critiquing opinions, though, it's only how you receive what's said, and of that, what you'll process. So let's take a look. What does critique look like, and how do you pursue it? You know, I believe the best place to start is with those people that respect you but stand nothing to gain or lose based on the uh, on how you receive the information. You know, this this person in your uh, life, your circle, this person is just an honest being that's straightforward, no cut, no chaser. And they're not close enough to you to be considered a good friend, but they're familiar enough with you to admire your efforts and respect your integrity. But they have no vested failure. Therefore, there's no reason to sugarcoat the feedback. You know, another great uh, resource or source for critique is what I like to call the model, you know, the person or persons or organization that most closely represent what your desired success looks like. And sometimes that option may not be immediately accessible. You may not have an end to how to, you know, reach them or whatever or get that feedback. So the alternative would be the next most closely modeled business or, or people in your network that align with the industry you're pursuing. Now, if such people are not in your network, you're probably not headed in the right direction and, and you have a lot of work to do. 
you know, if you've been tuned in to Boss Motivation, you know by I like to be transparent and relative in my delivery. As such, um, over the last week or so, I asked people inside and, and, and out of my circle for feedback on the early episodes. You know, some were quick to respond on how it served them and how great it was. This. Others took the request so serious, I appreciate it. They listened like multiple times to ensure they gave insightful feedback. And of course, there were others that recognized who, even though I generally value, uh, their opinion and respect, you know, them and whatever uh, efforts they're making, they were not qualified to this space or, or you know, or, or they were more concerned with how they would do what they've never done and giving me that old different opinion how they would have done something. You know, they would have served me better by simply telling me what would have made the experience better for them. Nevertheless, I took it all as open, honest feedback. I recognized the common threads that ran through all of it, and, and I appreciated the gems that I got, the ones that I never considered. You know, and while some feedback was merely opinions, whether positive or negative, most of them served me by delivering not only how it may have helped them, but what I could do differently to ensure that they would likely tune in consistently or for me just to improve personally. You know, I, I welcomed it all. In fact, two such pieces of feedback actually inspired today's message. You know, even though one was unsolicited and not related to previous episodes of Boss Motivation, these two particular uh, pieces of feedback, they further illustrated the difference between critique and opinion, you know, and amazingly, they kind of tied together. So even though the opinion was out of uh, emotion, it was an honesty there, you know, and even though it was rooted in their personal experience, largely driven by their actions, they shared how a response from me made them feel from an honest place. So the critique, let's, let's go with the critique part first. You know, this came from someone that simply respects me. You know, we're not in business uh, together. That We don't have a customer client uh, or even a colleague relationship. You know, meaning they themselves could not be served by telling me what I want or any benefit of acquaintance by telling me anything I didn't want to hear. They said, the numbers you are trying to get will respond to coaching before they seek your knowledge, one speaks to one what one should be doing versus highlighting one's areas of deficiency. And, and I thought, wow, you know, they said, you're not marketing your knowledge, you're marketing yourself. You have a commanding presence, use it. Do video, be more personal. Now, in the video, you know, that had been resounding through most feedback that I got but not with the same rationale. Um, be more personal. That's the part that really stood out. You see, it connected to the client's unsolicited response that said, you're very dry and can make a person feel like you really don't have the time or don't want to be bothered. Well, the reality is, is that that client's actions or more important actions to the response they received you know however i as the business owner and professional regardless of their actions should not have allowed them to feel that way so i wanted i mean i'm human i wanted to share with them why they were feeling that energy but i knew that would have only served to make them feel like i was being dismissive or even more that i didn't have the time or want to be bothered you know, so I decided to save them from explanations of their own deficiency, apologize for mine, and take the common thread. You know, critique serves to improve areas of unawareness and inexperience. Opinions destroy ambition and progress. See critique if you desire to grow. Avoid opinion if you desire to grow. Discern the two then do what you do.
Y'all have a boss week.